Hello and welcome to this Dr. Frost Maths video on using log graphs to estimate parameters in exponential and polynomial models. Now let's suppose that we had some data points. This is x, this is y, and we had some points like this. And we wanted to produce a linear model. Uh, well, that would be a line of best fit. And what I mean by a linear model here is that I could then estimate, using this line of best fit, a particular value of y for a particular value of x. So let's say, I don't know, x was 10 here. Then I could use my line of best fit to estimate what y would be when x is equal to 10. Now, let's just say I actually wanted to do a exponential model of best fit. So if I had some data points, say, like this, I then might want to uh, produce an exponential model. So remember, an exponential function looks like that. And I want that curve to fit these data points as much as possible. Now, that's much harder to do than fitting a straight line of best fit. And the way we do it is this. Now, let's suppose that we had some points which exactly gave you an exponential model. So let's just say that we knew that y was equal to 2 to the x, but that was kind of not known in advance. Then if I have different values of x, say like 1, 2, 3, 4, then 2 to the power of 1 is going to be 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. And then what we might do is then to log these y values. So in this case, let's say I was to log base 2 these y values. Then log base 2 of 2 is just 1. Log base 2 of 4 is 2. Log base 2 of 8 is 3. Log base 2 of 16 is 4. And then if instead of plotting y against x, we plotted log base 2 of y against x, well, we've got a point 1, 1. So 1, 1 is here. We've got a point 2, 2. We've got a point 3, 3 and a point 4, 4. And you can see that now this exponential model has turned into a linear model. It's turned that exponential curve into a straight line. And it might be when we log these y values, they don't exactly fit a straight line. Like with these points, for example, if I was to log all the y values here, it's not exactly going to fit the resulting straight line, but we could just find a straight line of best fit for this new data, and then we can sort of work out what the original parameters of the exponential model is. So this will be best illustrated with an example. The graph here shows the growth of the population of amoeba p over t hours. So here we've got log of p plotted against t, and you can see that we have a linear model, and that means the original model would have been exponential. So scientists suggest that the growth can be modelled exponentially using p equals a b to the t, well that's a generic uh, exponential equation, you can see that the variable t is in the power, where a and b are constants to be found. Write the equation for the above graph, so we've got this graph here, which is a straight line, we're told that m is equal to 0.7, and we can see that y-intercept is 3, and your x-axis is actually t, and your y-axis is actually log of p. So what would be the equation of this? Well, usually we write y equals mx per c, don't we, for the equation of a straight line? And we can see the y variable is actually log of p, and then the gradient is 0.7, the x-axis here is actually the t-axis, and the y-intercept, the c, is 3. So this is the equation for this particular line. And then it says, hence determine the values of a and b. So, given that we know the equation of this straight line, when we've logged the p-values, how could we work out these parameters of this original unlogged model? And what we do, and this is different slightly from how it does it in the Pearson uh, textbook, if you're using that, if you're doing it at Excel A-level, um, is you always start with the original equation. So we're starting with this original exponential model. And then what you do is you log both sides. So if we log both sides, that becomes log p. And then we're going to log the right-hand side. Now we can use laws of logs to break this up because we know that log of something times something is log of the first thing plus log of the second thing. And then we can use another law of logs so where we can move that power to the front. So we get log of p is equal to log of a plus t log b. And then what we can do is compare this 
equation which we obtain from the original exponential model against this equation of our straight line of best fit that we had over here. So, let, so let's we have where the log p matches the log p exactly. We can see that this is the t term and that's the constant term. Look, this is a t term here, this is a t term here. So we can see that log b must be equal to the 0.7. So we get log of b is equal to 0.7. And if we solve that, well, just remember that log with no base on it just means by default base 10. And then the way we solve that is we can insert that 0.7 into the middle here. So 10 to the power of 0.7 is b. We explore that in another video. So b is 10 to the power of 0.7. And that gives you uh, 5.012. And then let's compare it again, these constant terms. That's the constant term in this equation. That's the constant term in this equation. So we've got log of a is 3. So let's write that as well. Log of a is 3. And then again, we can solve that equation to get a is equal to 10 cubed, and that is equal to 1,000. So we've now worked out what the original equation was, this original exponential equation. We've got p is equal to a, which is our 1,000, times b, which is 5.012 to the power of t. So there we go, that's our original model. And if we were to want to interpret these values, remember that that number on the front of your exponential model gives you the initial value when time is zero. So that's the initial population of amoeba is 1,000. And that number there tells you the scale factor of growth. So that tells you that each hour that passes, the number of amoeba is going to be just over five times bigger. Now we can use this principle for polynomial models as well. So let's look at this question here. Dr. Frost records his Twitter followers over time. I just made these figures up. He proposes his followers follows a polynomial model, uh, f equals a t to the b, where f is the number of followers and t is the number of years after 2019. So if it was uh, 2020, the start of 2020, then t would be equal to 1. He logs t and he and draws a line of best fit through the first and last data point. So it's saying we should actually log both t and f. But let's just see what happens when we start with this model here. So we've got f equals a t to the b. And the reason this is a polynomial model rather than exponential model is because the variable, the t here, the time after 2019, the variable is in the base rather than in the power. If the variable was in the power, like it was before, we had b to the power of t, then it would be an exponential model. So we do exactly what we did before. We just log both sides. We always start with the original model. We log both sides. And then let's see what happens. I can break this up again. And if I just do that all in one step, we know that's going to be log of a plus log of t to the b. So log of a plus and log of t to the b. But you can move the b to the front to get b log t. Now, if we compare this to the equation of a straight line, this is effectively the y. Now, this is the variable term, so you've effectively got the mx plus c. So this is the equation of the line that you're comparing against. Now, can you see here that, again, the y value is the log of the original variable? So we have to log the y values, the f values here. But also here, can you see that the x value is log of t? So whereas before the t was left alone, we didn't have to log the t values, here we can see that t is actually log of t instead. So that's why it's suggested to log both f and t. So if we draw this table again, we've got t and f, and it's suggesting that we log both of these rather than just logging the f. So we've got log of t, log of f. So log of 0.5 is minus 0.301. Now what we're expecting is when we plot log of f against log of t, because we've logged both the x and the y values this time, we're expecting these points to sort of roughly follow um, a straight line of best fit. So it's going to approximately look like this. So this is minus 1, 0, and then 1. You're going to have a point here, a point here, and a point here. So it's going to look roughly like that. And you can see that does roughly follow a straight line, but we don't actually need to plot it. 
Now it says he logs T and F and draws a line of best fit through the first and last data points. So it's saying that we can actually form this straight line of best fit using this. That's not usually how you draw a line of best fit, but I'm just kind of trying to simplify the question here. So how do we find the equation of this straight line of best fit in the same way that we found the equation of this line before? This one was easier because I gave you the y-intercept and the gradient, but here we are actually have to find those things ourselves. So this first point here was minus 0.301. 3.964 and this second point here is 0 0.699 4.672 now we know how to find the gradient don't we so the gradient is just change in y over change in x so the change in y from here to here is you just subtract them so 4.672 minus 3.964 over the change in x, so the change in x from that minus 0 0.301 to 0 0.699, so we do the 0 0.699 minus minus 0 0.301, and that gives you 0 0.708. And then to find the y intercept, we could use y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So we just choose one of the points, let's say we choose this point here, this point here. So we do y minus y1, so y minus 3.964 is equal to m, which we worked out was 0 0.708, x minus x1, so x minus minus 0 0.301, so it'll be plus 0 0.301. And then if we just expand this out, we get 0 0.708x, and then the y-intercept is going to be 0 0.708 times 0 0.301 plus that 3.964. So we've worked out that the y-intercept is 4.177108. So we can see the gradient is 0 0.708, and the y-intercept, that value here, we've worked out is 4.177. So now we can compare this equation of our straight line of best fit, our regression line, with this logged equation here. So if we actually use the variables we have, our x value here is actually log of t. So we have 0 0.708 log t plus 4.177 and the y value was actually log of f it was actually the log f axis not the y axis and we're going to compare that against the logged equation using our original model so we had log of f is equal to log of a so that's the log a here the constant term plus b log t so plus b log t. I've reordered the term so the log t is in the consistent place. And now I can just compare these two equations. Just like we did with the previous question, we compare the logged model with our straight line of best fit that we found. So we can see here that the b is just equal to 0 0.708, so we don't need to transform it this time or do 10 to the power of it. And we can see that log of a is equal to 4.177. And then we solve in the usual way, a is going to be 10 to the power of 4.177, which is equal to 15031. So there we go. Our model is f equals, we've worked out the parameter a, which was 15031, times by t to the power of b, which we worked out is 0 0.708. So this is our model. And the original question, if we look back at the original question, is estimate his followers in 2059. Now, T is number of years after 2019. So in 2059, 40 years have passed, so T is equal to 40. So if we just go up here, if t is equal to 40, we can sub that into our polynomial model. So f is equal to 15031 times by 40 to the power of 0 0.708. And if we do that, we get 204766. So it's estimating that in 2059, I will have almost 205,000 followers on Twitter.